Hey everybody, it's Sandra Deluxe. Can I get a hell yeah? Yeah. So today I wanted to do some comparisons and swatches. Pat McGrath came out with a new palette, the Utopian Dreams palette. And I wanted to do some comparisons to the Divine Rose palette and also create this mother freaking look. You know that if there's anything Pat McGrath, I'm like totally all over it. And so I wanted to do this look and for like the freaking first time ever and I'm really excited about it. She gave me a link that if you use it and you want to purchase the palette, you get a freaking discount. What? This this video is actually not sponsored. I did a sponsored a reels with her and I was super inspired by the imagery and the whole mood board she creates every time she releases a palette. So I created something there. So I'm recreating the look, a few subtle changes, but I wanted the opportunity to kind of explain the palette and how it looks and all of the beauty that it is. If you want to see swatches, see how to get the look, see some comparisons, then please stay tuned. So first of all, this is the palette. And like I said, anything Pat McGrath, I'm totally all over. When I first saw it just like this, I was kind of like, okay, I don't see the, the colors and stuff. But when you swatch it, let me just swatch it. All of these pigments that I've explained in other videos that shine different colors all at once, those are really high quality pigments. I know people who've created makeup lines and these pigments made to make these shadows are really freaking expensive and hard to get. So it's super exciting whenever Mother Pat ever comes out with a new palette. This is the outer box of it. Gorgeous. I'm not even gonna pretend like I haven't already opened it because I have I did the reels with it And then this is obviously the shade so I'm gonna do a swatch on my arm So these are the swatches on my arm in one light and it's so crazy because this palette You really need to see in person to see how bright it is So I'm gonna adjust the light so you can see how this changes in different lighting So when we're doing you know tutorials and stuff like that we do stuff so that we look our best but I just want to show you what it looks like in a little bit more of a chill looking light. You see how vibrant things look? And then I'll even turn this one off. And I'll just use my phone light and look at this. This is a, almost, from what I can see from the screen, the most realistic on how it really looks in real life. Like it really catches the light. Like look at these colors and how bright they are and how they're changing so many different colors depending on the angle. And as I've turned off each one of my lights, how it looks totally different. Like look how vibrant that coral is and how plummy that brown is and how that middle shade is kind of going pink green gold I'm gonna turn on my lights and show you again this is why I find this palette so exciting it's because it's subtle hints of color like here that middle shade almost disappears into my skin tone until light hits it so these are all pigments that really work well with light turning on one more light and see how it changes you see how it went from that really bright coral and now it's more subtle and other colors are really standing out. It really depends on what your lighting is and it moves with you. So I thought it was important for me to show you what the swatches look like. And the reason why I think this palette is so dope is because it's for people who might want to spice up their routine. As you know, a lot of makeup is pretty like chill right now. It's kind of like natural glam for a lot of it. And this is a great way to introduce color into your natural glam. You can have it very pigmented or you can wear it nice and sheer so you get hints of color as it moves, just like I showed you. So when I first saw the palette, I was like, okay, I want to see the colors and all that stuff, Hutopian, I'm thinking, different colors but when I saw the swatches I was like I don't know if I see all the colors when I tried it on in real life it's like a gift you only get to see in real life like anything I've ever seen in any other palette before like it's absolutely stunning and when you look at it just straight on like that looks like a neutral palette if I go like this as I was changing the light and in person when I was looking at myself in different lighting and in different mirrors and stuff like that you see literally every color of the rainbow there's blue there's purple red green and it's all in in here I really encourage you if you can get swatches but hopefully my swatches helped a little bit I saw some comparisons people were saying you know is this like divine rose so I'm gonna swatch divine rose one so this is divine rose one what it looks like in the palette divine rose two these are the divine rose one swatches let's turn off some lights divine rose one let me show you again. Way more sparkle way less mattes way warmer and more unexpected shades 
I would say the main two differences between these two palettes is this is like very cool tone, not as much glimmer. There's only one real of those like kind of sparkly shades in that palette. This one has a few of them, like two really frosty ones and then the, like there's no texture really like this. Like the Divine Rose one, this has this like kind of white one here that's very pearly and just soft, like very finely milled color. And like this one here, the pink that transfers into kind of a goldy color. There's nothing like that in Hutopian Dreams. It's all like you're sparkling or you're not. There's one soft frost, but it's nothing like those shades there. This one is probably the most similar to the only soft frost, but even that one has more color. Now I want to show you Divine Rose 2, which is this one right here. Now the only color that I would say is super similar, also this is a plum. The brown in that is a little bit like a regular brown. The brown in the Hutopian Dreams palette is kind of a plummy color. You're going to see when I put it in my eyes. And I'm going to swatch this one and compare it to Hutopian Dreams as well. So this is Divine Rose 2 swatched. Again, a major difference in texture and those shades that sparkle three different colors at once. So with this one, like there's one that sparkles a few, or two that kind of show a few different colors at once, but this is something you really need to experience in real life. Like it almost looks like nothing on my arm at this angle. I'm gonna put it on my eyes so you guys can see it in real life, but I'm telling you, this is stunning. The other ones definitely have more rose, cool tones, plum, that type of stuff. This just, I don't know, it's more gold, green, purple, purple, blue, it's hard to explain, so I think the best way I can do it is just put it on. Also, there are two shades that look really similar in Hutopian Dreams and Divine Rose 2. One is called Sextopia. The other one, I'm not sure what it's called, but they looked really similar. I'm like, oh, maybe they used Sextraterrestrial again. So I want to show you them together. This one is Sextraterrestrial. It's kind of a purple that turns into green and gold. This is the other one in the new Hutopian palette. And even in the camera, it looks like it's more purple, but this one is more burgundy. Oh, sorry, this one here. This one is more burgundy, and it has a little bit more of a sparkle to it and it does reflect almost an army green and a little bit of gold. This one is more purple. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna try and get in close and turn down the light again. Do you see that? This one is extraterrestrial. This is the one in Hutopian. So I'm just gonna keep moving it to see if I can catch the green but it's hard to do it on camera when you have continuous light so I'm gonna turn this off. You can see it. I don't know if I'll catch the green, but I'm telling you in person, like it catches green light. I'm gonna try and move, see if I can get it. And when you get it, it's super green. Ah, oh, it's just so hard on camera. Is it here? Let me see. Oh, there we go, there's the green. So one second, wait for it to focus. So do you see how that catches green light there? Do it from a little further away. See how it catches gold? It just depends on which way you're facing in the light. So, again, the one on the outside of my hand is extraterrestrial, and the other one is one in a utopian. There we go, whoa. Isn't that sick? But if you're not in like camera lighting, you can see how they reflect differently. One's more of like an army green slash gold, and the other one is more of like a true green. You can see that. So they are different. Again, you have to swatch it to be able to see these differences. It was freaking dope, yeah! All right. Next thing they came out with is the Intensifies Artistry Wand. The clicker on the bottom, obviously I've used it. I'll show you the difference. So I'm gonna put some in my hand right here and right here. You can see it? And it feels like nothing. Like it's not like a other primers or anything like that. Like it just feels a little bit tacky, but it doesn't feel like it has any drying time or anything like that. I'm gonna take this shade, which is otherwise a little bit sheer, and I can't even see where I put it. And I put one stripe over top of the where I put the wand. But look how that color is just. And then I'm gonna put it where I don't have any of the artistry wand. And again, something you need to see in real life, but you see how the other one, you can really kind of see my tattoo underneath. I'll even put more on. But the one where I put the Intensifies Artistry Wand, it really picks it up. And especially when you're doing light application, like let's say with a brush or whatever. I'm gonna do it with another color. There's a little bit of the glitter still on there, but I'm gonna do that color here. And this time I'm gonna do without the primer first. So that's that, just like a nice little coat. That kind of changes color. And then I'm gonna put it over top of where I actually put the wand just so you can see the difference in pigment. 
Like no lie, Pat McGrath has like really intense eyeshadows. The way I kind of think about it is it almost creates like a little filler almost. Like if you wear a foundation primer and you're just putting the foundation on over top and it can get into pores or texture or anything like that. This creates like a nice slick base so that instead of the little particles of glitter or pearl, instead of it like sitting on top of creases and might not catch the light the same, it's like a gloss undercoat that lets it slip right across. So let's say if you were to pour glitter on top of just your dry lips it might that's a pretty large particle of sparkle it might just settle into lines and stuff like that but if you use a lip primer or a lipstick first it can just kind of smooth over top or same thing with when people do those metallic nails they take like a really pigmented color and they can just kind of dust it on and it might fall off or it might have a little bit of ridges but when they really buff it in and smooth it in and put a base underneath it turns into metallic so that's how I envision the wand. I'm going to use it right now, but first because I want a light application of color, I'm going to go into this kind of pink color, which on my skin is going to give us a nice rosy base. So I'm going to do it all over because I want this look to be quite pink. I'm recreating the look that I did on my Instagram reels because I just thought it was a cool look and I wanted to do it more permanent and more of an explanation because sometimes it's hard to show everything in just that, you know, one minute that we have and to explain and, you know, I can sit down and show you different light and color and application. So this is our kind of base shade and as you can see it looks different than what it looks like in the palette because it's heating up and mixing with the oils on my lid. I'm just doing it bare for now. I'm gonna buff it up quite a bit. All right. Then I'm gonna take this coral shade. Like I want, a, I'm gonna try and use like all the rainbow colors here. And I'm gonna do a little bit over here. And I'm gonna buff it into the crease. And so the first shade was our transition color. And this one will kind of brighten it up a little bit, but it just brings that color to life. This on its own, if you use it like a liner or something, we flyer because I love corals like that. So again here, pulling it into our kind of inner corner area and then into the crease. The first color we put just above the crease, we're just doing the most. And I really want to play on the light moving and catching different shades. So that's what we finna do. I'm going to go into this plummy brown shade down here to put in a bit of a shape. And I'm just going to kind of massage it in in flattering shape for me and you know wing it out and stuff but just a little bit so that our frosty shades have a backdrop to work with and then really mix it into our coral shade then i'm going to take this color that reflects that beautiful red and green tone and i'm going to put that all over the lid almost about three quarters of the way and then blend it into our brown you could do this without doing the brown first but i just like that having a little bit of matte to create shadow really looks just finished and it gives it a bit more dimension as you can see it's kind of like again a shadow that moves with you so I like whenever I'm using frost I like to put a little bit of like a matte deeper color even just underneath so it has a shadow that won't catch the light so it looks like a little bit of depth it looks different than it does here so it's exaggerating and contouring our shape I like these with my finger a lot too so don't be afraid to get in there like wow even just like this like fierce cat eye neutral Oh, I forgot this light. There, now you can probably see me a little better. Then, I'm gonna go in with this shade up here. This is another really surprising color, if you can see it just on my finger. Like, it's purple, it's green, it's yellow, it's pink. And I'm just gonna tap this on all over my lid. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but I'm gonna use the intensifies thing. In my video, I actually did use the intensifies wand on my lid, but I forgot to record that bit of footage. So I wanna just show you the difference of the two. And then I also use the intensifies um, wand in certain areas to really bring out a certain color. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side real quick. And I'm just gonna take my matte brown plummy shade undo that in my ankle again creating shadow so that it doesn't just catch the light all over creates a little bit more depth and dimension blending it out and then i'm gonna go in with the wand right on my lid making a little space i'm gonna give it a little finger blend going in with our shade see how it just like slicks the color down Obsessed and then I'm actually going to go in with a second layer, but this time just with my finger I'm gonna put that shimmery shade on top. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with this right here I'm just gonna show you the difference in pigment see that 
cray cray. Now I don't want to look crazy, so I'm just going to do that second step over my eyes on the other eye because it is sheer and it's beautiful. But like if you just want to finger tap it on, like, you know, whatever. But look, it looks totally more green, more purple on this side. So I'm just going to go over top again. Just put a, another layer so that we are matchy matchy. Hopefully it doesn't affect too much that I didn't do the other shade on top. Yeah, look at that, just a few taps, and we're up to speed. It's a little different on the end, but whatever. That's just because I didn't put the intensifies there. But look at the difference that that made. And I hope it's picking it up on camera, but it's bright. So I'm just gonna soften the edges a little bit, fluff it out. It's so crazy bright. But again, like I said, if you just want like a touch of color, just lightly with your finger, it'll catch the light in certain areas, more intensity, the intensified. So, wand. So now I'm gonna add some little accents with the Intensifies Artistry Wand. This time I'm gonna take it on a little brush. And I'm gonna swipe some right underneath my eye. Show you three different techniques, you know? I find though that like a finger is just en like enough or even just with the wand by itself buffed out with a finger because it does pick up a lot. When you use a brush, the little fibers kind of like, you know, scoop it up. I like, I like it with the finger. And I'm gonna do a little touch like right here, but like soft because I don't want it to be too pigmented right here, but I want that the accent color I'm about to do to really pop, you know? So I'm gonna go in this baby right here and I'm just gonna stamp it over top. And it gives us this like cute accent color that's kind of a surprise. When I did it in the video, I used my finger, but I'm like, let's just try all the ways. I'm gonna wipe off the areas that we didn't put it. I'm just gonna do it with my finger, I think. I haven't actually tried it underneath my eye without a brush. I mean, with a brush. I love it. I love it. I love this color. I love this palette. I like how every color is a surprise when you put it on. And I'm gonna go over that area that we did the little bit so you can just see the gonna be soft where we didn't put the the wand and intense where we did but I just like how straight on it's not there oh this side yeah this side oh hell yeah maybe I went a little hardcore but that's okay there's no such thing you see that depending on which way I move we're getting a different vibe here it's like oh what a like normal art look and then as you move you're getting drama for your mama and that's why I think it's so important for this palette to see it in person. Chill, intense, intense living. I'm gonna take a little bit of this inner corner color, put it in the inner corner. Cause we love the light inner corner. Oh, this, I should have done the intensified wand with this. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of the, our accent color in there. See, even if I hold it here, it's purple. Here it's like freaking white. There it's like bluey. Nah, let's just leave our accent color where it is. I'm gonna take the Permagel eyeliner pencil in black. I'm gonna do like a not perfect, just quick line just to draw out my eye shape a little bit. like. Drawing out the, the wing first, connecting it, doing it super subtle because I want all the drama to be on the lid, but I just like how it pulls my eyes out, opens them up a little bit, maybe a little in here. Just like quick, you know? Same thing, do a little wingy. Draw it out with your finger maybe, and then connect it to your lid. It's like a half eyeliner. I'm gonna do up my face before I complete my eyes. You know the regulars. Pro Bronze Fusion or Snatch of the Nose. Regular regular just was by this so that uh, get back to eyes because I'm loving this look. Real quick, it's like I feel like I have multiples of so many things and then all of a sudden I've hit pan on everything all at once. I don't know how that happens, but try my best. Dark Deep Mineralized Skin Finish by MAC. Give us some bronze. I don't even need to look doing this, I feel like, half the time because I've done it for so long. Next, I'm gonna do my Pat McGrath Sublime Highlight Trio. I've used this lots of times. I like to mix the bronze and the pinky shade. Highest points on my face. Down the center of the nose just a little bit. Okay, then I'm gonna do the Skin Finish Divine Blush. This one's in Love Struck because it kind of goes with her pinky vibe. Yeah. I like to do all this stuff before I put on eyelashes because I be getting bronzer and all kinds of stuff on my lashes. So in my reels I use the Dark Star Mascara but I thought I'd keep it OG. The first mascara, the Fetish Eyes Mascara, light coat on the top. I don't know, like I said I was using Latisse and I'm like, I don't know if it really works. It kind of does but I also kind of wasn't doing it properly so hey. But I love this mascara. And then kind of light coat on the bottom but 
kind of aggressive. And also, like with mascara, I don't like to like dip it too many times. Try to use as much as you can before you put it back in because when you force air in and out of there, when you're like pumping it, it'll dry it out more, get all kinds of stuff everywhere. So just be gentle. Then I'm gonna put on my lashes that I've been living in for the past forever, or since it came out, the Roquel Beauty Lashes in Aurora. My faves. They're just gorge. Just putting some glue on, give it a pinch, just wiggling it, wiggle it just a little bit. I bet you not many people know that song, but if you do, shout out to you. All right. Now for lippies, I just, I've been on my, my like natural lip vibe, so I'm gonna do the Divine Nude Liquid Lipstick by Pat McGrath Labs. A little color, or anti-color, a little pinkiness. And then an OG fave. This is the Nude Astral Lip Fetish Lip Balm. It's got like pink sparkles in it. I love her lip balms. Oh yeah. Let's take off the headband. Wrap it up. So thank you guys so much for watching. So this is the final look. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you're a Pat McGrath stan like I am, then I hope this video showed you the beauty and the amazingness of the palette. I'm obsessed. I love, you know, how we can move around right now and catch different light and different colors and different hues. Super inspiring palette. Like I said, I've never seen anything like it. Hope you love it too. Again, I'm gonna put a link below for you to get a discount if you wanna get the palette. Palette, like what my idol gave me a coupon code okay composing ourselves so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to share subscribe and follow love yourself so important something I'm trying to remember every day as well now too during these times stay pretty and I'll see you guys again in the next video take care